Hey everyone, Andrew here. In this video, we're going to talk about the NerdSec by XOR Electronics. So what is the NerdSec? Basically, it's a sequencer, but it functions as a tracker. Um, and in this video, we're going to go over kind of the, the basics of how to get up and running with this module, but it hopefully will kind of tell you if this module is for you or not, if you haven't done that yet. Um, so first of all, what's a tracker? What's a sequencer? Well, sequencer is one left to right. Typically, trackers run up and down, but there's also some cool things you can do in a step-by-step -step basis that often you can't do with a sequencer, or at least it's done in a different way. Um, now, all these jacks over here, basically there's six channels in the nerd sec. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, ignore these for now, but there's six main channels or tracks on the tracker. Um, each one of those has a CV output, a trigger, and a mod output. So times six. These last two tracks are sample or oscillators. So there's you can put small samples like a kick drum, a snare drum, and trigger them and output them here. You can also create oscillators and, and do pitch from that. So pretty powerful. Now you have clock in, reset in, clock out, reset out. You have four inputs. They sell a bunch of expanders, one of which is showed here. So you can plug in a gamepad if you want to control the screen with a gamepad instead of, instead of these buttons. They sell, uh, and then also this is MIDI in and MIDI out. Cool thing with the MIDI in, of course you could sync this, but you can actually record all your notes and, and really anything with MIDI. So you can either perform it or use another MIDI device to record its, to output its recorded MIDI into this, which is really cool. But you can also output MIDI, which can get really fun when you're using a module like the Bitbox Micro. Because um, you can do polyphonic MIDI on multiple tracks and trigger multiple polyphonic instruments and all the drums just over MIDI, <laughs> which is super cool. And that doesn't even take up like any of these jacks. I mean, it'll take up a couple, whatever, how many tracks you use, but it won't take up the jacks. So the general way that you, you work with this module, and in fact, before I get into that, there's two more expanders. So I mentioned we have all these outputs here. You can get a more CV expander that gives you 16 more CV outputs and a more trigger expander that gives you 16 more triggers. So for example, you can assign the more trigger output to channel one, and now instead of having one trigger output in channel one, you have 16. Or you can have 16 out CV outputs on channel two. I think actually it splits it up so you'd have eight on one, eight on another, and you know, whatever. The point being, you'd have essentially 28 CV outputs, 22 trigger outputs total. Um, and then of course, MIDI, MIDI out and in. <laughs> and then these regular inputs and samples and an oscillator. So incredibly powerful. So let's get into the general workflow for this module. <clears throat> um, up and down is essentially patterns. So think of this like Ableton Live, if you're familiar with that. You can trigger patterns, which is like individual blocks. But you can also trigger whole rows, which will play like all the patterns in tracks one through six. So that's kind of like Ableton Live's scenes. So to make a pattern, I just click OK. And then to go into the pattern, so like this button here is like the home page, but this button brings me into the pattern. So I'm on track one now, which I have routed to this um, pluck by two HP module here. I can just start, um, I don't know, I'll do like this little pattern. So what I'm doing here, I hold shift and then right, which increments by individual notes and also left. Up shift and up and down goes up by octaves. Um, so here, I'll just make a little pattern here, nothing fancy. <clears throat> but if I hit play, now it's just playing this first 16 steps, but there's actually 64 steps per pattern. And in fact, you're not really limited to that because if you have patterns next to each other, right after each other, they'll automatically fall into the next one. And if you don't want them to do that, you can just leave an empty row. And there's essentially an infinite number of, uh, I mean, pattern. I mean, there's a limit here, but it's like a stupid limit that you, you would probably never hit. So going back into here, um, I don't really want to do 64. So one thing I can do that's kind of unique to Tracker is there's per step, I can edit all these parameters and I won't go over all of these, but I can, I can change the trigger settings per step. So you could output different gate lengths per step. I could output different mod outputs per step to change any value I want to change on another um, module. I can also do effects, and these effects can be um, you know, anything from pitch to randomization 
to grabbing the value from another CV channel, um, but I'm just gonna use a break. And this is just gonna cause it to loop at that point. That's how you program basic um, notes. You just, you know, hold shift and go left or right, up and down, and then you can trigger like the up and down here. If I wanted to transpose an octave, I can just do shift down on all these. And then um, just play. Now, maybe I didn't want to do a break here. So if um, there is indeed copying and pasting on this, so I can hold shift mark and then down to the last beat. Shift mark. And these buttons here go up and down by pages. So I can go to the next page, shift copy, which will paste down, shift copy, paste, shift copy, paste, back to the top. And now instead of breaking there, I'm doing. Now we have that. And then I could go in and I could do, do some customization and add in some, I don't know, random notes here. And yeah, and then it's kind of a cool way to go in and, and write all your stuff. But, you know, I'm really like skipping over a, a huge amount of complexity with what you can do with this effects. Because not only do you have one effect per step, you can do up to four effects per step. So it's, it's almost an absurd amount of, of control that you have. So I can go back here. And, you know, one thing I could do is... I could add on to, to track two, I could add in a pattern. Now if we go into that pattern, instead of programming notes, I can program um, a five millisecond trigger and you could do different um, do different things here. Like there's re-triggering, trigger 10 seconds. In fact, let me go triggers 15, 20, 25, 30, 40. Eventually we get to um, gate on. And then I think at the very bottom is gate off. So you know, depending on what you're doing and what module you're sending to will depend on what you need. I'm just going to do a five millisecond gate and we'll just do a four in the floor uh, pattern here and I'll add in a line break here. So yeah, and I can just continue that process for however many drums I want to trigger on this module or however many note sequences I want to trigger. Um, of course, we only have six tracks, but like I could go into track one, for example, and I can go over to <clears throat> the mod output, and like technically, if I go past all these little numbers, we're going to get into notes. So it might be hard to see the exact numbers on the screen here, um, but under value, these are all in hexadecimal. Don't worry about that. You could change it to regular decimal. Um, I'm just fine with hex. Um, but you can also just do notes. So like, <laughs> you know, I, I can trigger, I can make this mod output just another pitch CV output. And then if I had the trigger expander, I could use that expander to trigger the module, you know, or I could just use the regular triggers under here. So in a way you have six tracks, but in a way like with some creativity, especially with the more CV expander and then MIDI, you can kind of have almost infinite tracks or, or infinite melodic patterns and drum patterns. I mean, not infinite up to like 22 and 28, but infinite when you consider that you'll realistically never be using that. Um, and if you are using all that, you probably have a pretty damn crazy live show because in the studio, you would never need that much. Um, so yeah, now another cool thing I want to show you um, as a kind of overview, like obviously there's a lot more to this. Things can get complicated. There's all these these um, these menus and stuff that you can go through and customize. But one really cool thing I want to show is that I can do automate here. <clears throat> and what this does is this I can do LFOs, envelopes, and uh, CV. I can basically get an input from here and route it into anything, <laughs> really. So, I mean, I, I can I can get a CV and then like it's coming in and I could control it and output it somewhere else or do something with it. Um, so we're just gonna do LFOs because I think they're the easiest to explain, but you know, it can be LFOs, envelopes, or CVN. So in a way, like if you had an oscillator and a VCA and a filter, 
you don't need an envelope module or an LFO or 10 inverters because you can make an LFO, make multiple LFOs, multiple envelopes, and change the speed, offset them, change the wave, change the amplitude of them, um, and even sync them to clocks because this is your clock, right? So in this case, I have an LFO, and I'll just click OK here to get it started, and I'll just shift down to go into this bottom thing. Um, this might be a little hard to see, but there's a little dot going left to right there, um, right, like, right in that white line. But I'm controlling the magnitude of that here. I can go to the speed, I can slow it down a little bit. I can offset it so it's more skewed, positive or negative. I can even invert it, change the wave to a sawtooth, triangle. I actually don't know what that one is. It's a constant value, I believe. <clears throat> oh yeah, so I can just do a, an actual straight up offset, which is kind of cool. Um, noise, different noise. <laughs> um, I'm guessing one of these is positive and negative noise and just positive noise. Maybe not. I don't know. Most of the time I'm just doing sine wave or triangle. Um, and then <clears throat> if I do shift up, I can go back up here and I can send this wherever I want. So I could send this to the CV output of channel one, but I'm already using that. The mod output of channel one, I'm not using. You could change trigger length, trigger delay. You can override effects, override glide. So it doesn't have to just be outputting. It can internally modulate stuff which is dope. So now in this case, I'm just going to do mod. <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll just grab this cable here and I'll put it in, um, I don't know, the d damping? Maybe, yeah, sure, let's do damping. So if I um, click play, There, it's going up. We hear it damping, get a little bit less intense. So, like this LFO is modulating this device here, which is super cool. And I can have it right now, it's not synced to a clock, but I can um, just link it to essentially, essentially anything, <laughs> which. Um, I usually just do free because normally I'm doing this purposely to modulate, but you can sync it to a bunch of stuff, you can change the phase, and yeah, all that jazz. So, and you can have, you know, up to seven different automations going on, and you don't just have to send them in one place. Like I can go up here and I can send it to also, you know, mod of channel four or whatever. And I can just delete it like that. Um, and of course, I can just, you know, turn it off by clicking it, and then I can just shift, delete, and delete it. Just like I can go over here and delete my bass drum pattern. Now, of course, you can save and, and load, like I can do project, and I can go up to load menu, and I can load this um, project that I had here, and I can just stop here, I can go over to this pattern. Oh, you know what, I think, I think I changed the patching on something after doing this, so I'll just play this one. And this I'm using a few LFOs to um, to modulate various parameters, and then I have several more patterns going on. But pretty simple. It's actually just doing everything that I showed you. Uh, now a few more things I want to point out is that there's a lot of little information right up here to read, like the name of the project, the BPM, um, and then if I click play, you'll see that um, there'll be like notes and triggers showing up in right here to, to kind of get a bird's eye view of what's happening. In fact, like I have this module synced by clock, if I save this pattern correctly, so I can I can like trigger stuff in time. So yeah, 
So as you can see, like insane, the powerful module. And the, one of the cool, oh, I gotta stop this. One of the coolest things about it is that this module is kind of constantly in development. Um, they have a new expander called like the video expander or something um, that you can actually plug this screen into a full monitor and control this with a keyboard instead of um, controlling it with this, this small screen and this thing here, which for some people I could see totally making sense. But this is all done by one guy, which is nuts, by the way. But um, loading firmware is super easy. Like he's constantly putting out um, extra um, extra features. He's constantly fixing bugs. Like every couple of weeks or every couple of months, there's a new firmware patch. It's super easy. You download it, throw a file on there, and then you do something special when you restart the module. I don't know. I, I did it when I bought it, and it, I was like surprised at how um, easy it worked. So yeah, if you want to see more about this module, just let me know. I'm happy to cover more stuff. But super powerful. If you can name a more powerful sequencer in your rack on the market, let me know because I don't think there is one. I haven't heard of one. <laughs> but um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.